What you said he was driving when you met him? Um, a nice ass white 850 Beamer, man. That shit was beautiful, dog. Like it was some shit that I ain't never seen. That shit was exotic, dog. Like, and um, the nigga, the nigga put me in a car, and um, you know, I I was a little movie and you know wow you know what i mean so i was into you know what i mean looking around and shit and i seen a fucking um new york times right. and when i i, I looked down i i, was, I seen the, the um article about tupac so i got interested in that shit and he was like yo player he was like yeah i'm in the news about shit and you don't even know about it and i was like i didn't hear it because i was still reading but I heard what he said because I remembered it. But I'm not the type of nigga that gonna say nothing about what he's saying. I know what you're saying, bro. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's your business. Right. You know what I mean? And I was reading because, you know, I I, I was interested in Tupac's music. You know what I mean? I I came up, you know, with Left Eye. Left Eye had put me on and she was fucking with Tupac. I was uh, signed to Dallas Austin in 1993. Um, so it was around 1993, 94, I met Haitian Jack in the studio. He was coming through, and um, people was basically preparing me for his entrance. He was, they was like, yo, you know what I mean? Yo, be chill. Such and such this dude right now, and he's coming in. Basically, he ain't to be fucked with him. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck. Such and such, such and such. Boom. And then... Um, he came in, and I don't know what happened after that, but I know like the next day, I seen the nigga, and he invited me to come in the car, and and um, he had a white 850, you know, that shit was motherfucking a beautiful car, I sat up in that motherfucking, and um, basically, we, um, But yeah, it, it was a uh, it was a eight fifty. It was an eight fifty. It was a white. Yeah, that was, you know what I mean. A white eight fifty. Nigga, we got in it. We sat in it. We sat inside. We talked, nigga, and it was it. Oh. Uh, so uh, he came to Dallas Austin studio. Yeah. To visit. Yeah, that was his people. What year was this? Around 19, motherfucking 93 or some shit like that. Like 93? Yeah. What do you look like? He's a light-skinned nigga like me. You know what I mean? Short nigga. He's a nigga. You know what I mean? My family, like, you know what I mean? He's, put it like that, man. He was a, he's a New York nigga. I'm from Philly. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we, I, I've, I've been around this type of shit all my life. That's this is what I was reaching for for you to say like the type of person or the type yeah. of the level of you know the le the level of alleged I don't know predatory shit you know he. Has now, I don't want to talk about his problems and shit like that though. Right. What's his problems? Whatever his problem is with pop. Nah, I ain't want to talk about too. But no shit like that. Like I don't get involved in that. And I don't know him to say nothing bad about Jack, because Jack ain't never did nothing bad to me. Right. I just wanted to know how you met him, though. I met that nigga through Dallas Austin. Okay. So how, how'd it go? Just go from the top for me. I met him. I, 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 um, I went to, um, I met him. I, he came through the studio. He came through the studio. They was preparing. All right. When right. they motherfucking was preparing. I basically was... When you say in, preparing, what was they, cleaning up the studio? No, nah, nigga, they was scared of them. Them niggas is scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They was scared of the motherfucker. I thought, I thought you said that they, was, that they was friends with him. They was cool with him. Scared friends, nigga. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, so... 
they everybody was kind of like on edge. Yeah. All right. But I was like but you already didn't, in you, my zone. You didn't know him at I the time. I was 13. Like what? What? I'm a 13. I'm not worried about what are you gonna do? Murder a kid? Right. Or some shit like that? Right. What the fuck? <laughs> you bitch ass niggas is crazy. Right. right. You know what I mean? Right. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, okay. What? I got what I needed. Yeah. I just needed you to keep it gully, man, because yeah. we didn't talked about this before on camera. Yeah, when, I'm just when, when, when we sat down and when I told you that this was for the Haitian Jack movie, I'm, I'm, it seemed like you kind when I cut the camera on, you kind of braced yourself. Yeah, but, because we had situations that I felt like, you know what I mean, he was threatening me sometimes. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like warning me and shit. But that's any old hell to do that to a young buck. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what type of warning? Like Like don't be wild, nigga. Right. As a young nigga. You know what I mean? No doubt. Just like yo, you know what I mean? Don't be wild. Don't be tripping. I was wilding in the club. I think he wanted my bitch one day. Excuse my language All for right. saying that in the house. Uh, she was a motherfucking uh, a, a, a model. Her name was Sky. Yeah, he liked models. Yeah, she was like a, a twenty thousand dollar, forty thousand dollar a, a, a fucking job model and shit. You know what I mean? And he, he he scared me off of that pussy real quick. I was like, shit, I'm gonna I'm leave and leave this bitch with him if he want her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, man, I just wanted to get a little little. You know, you've been in the industry. I yeah. had to. Seemed like I had to pry a little bit, but you comfortable with everything, everything uh, that I recorded? Today? Yeah, man, that was. Cause I, my viewers, they going they point of view is they gonna see that I had the camera in my lap, like I was recording you on a slot, and I was for a minute. You dig? And then I, I led you into. Yeah. So boom, so we good. Nigga, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. All right. Say no more. He had a newspaper on the floor, and it was in New York Times, but we was in Georgia, so I was like, nigga, fuck this nigga out of New York Times with the two pie. I know he from New York, man. Boy, he paid the paper, but why? What's the significance of this paper? It was the two pot shit that was in there. And he was like, Basically, like, player, you know, I'm in the news about shit you don't even know about. You know what I mean? And, you know, I was interested in a Tupac article because, you know, I knew of Pac through Lisa. You know what I mean? Left out because she put me on. I met her in Philly and shit like that. And, um... When I got to Georgia, she was like, yo, I want you to meet your Uncle Tupac. You know what I mean? I was like, I ain't got no Uncle Tupac. She was like, um, you you know, you remind me of, I guess, because my mom smoked crack. You know what I mean? I was the only son. And he was um, a product of that type of shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's crazy because Jack felt that way, too, in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, hey, player. Like, um, you remind me of somebody, you don't want to be like that. You know what I mean? That's what he said. Right. And when he said that, um, wow. When he said that, that shit kind of like sunk in my head. And I was like, I need to pause. Um, he was like, seen me wilding and shit because I came in there with Jodeci and I'm moving around the club and you know I admire Pac and shit I guess I was trying to be like the nigga a little bit or something and he was um basically on some shit like yo you remind me of somebody you don't want to you don't want to be like that and I, I dipped off right. you know what I'm saying like fuck that bitch she ain't worth it you know what I mean you know, when you, 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 you get comfortable, you can reflect a little bit more. Right. So I, I, I just got comfortable. The thing is, like when I when I when I when I met the nigga um on one occasion he was like, Hey player, 
He was like, man, he was like, nigga, you don't, you don't want to be, he was like, nigga, um, you don't want to act like that, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because I must have been moving around, moving around the club a little bit too much and wilding out. You know, and I ain't know his issue that he had with Pop. I think I reminded him of that nigga or something. You know what I mean? And I think that the nigga was really trying to, um, like, warn me not to be like no, no nigga that was out there on no shit like Pop. And and what 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 I mean about that is, Pac was a nigga that he was um he was a wild nigga, and I was wild, but I guess I was too young to be that wild like that nigga was being. Okay, I get it. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Right. Right. And. You know, I was like, you know, I was in the club with Jodeci that night. Okay. You feel me? Me and Jodeci had came to the club. And I had met Jimmy Henchman, and you know, I knew Jack, and he had another homeboy that he rolled with and shit. You know what I mean? I knew all three of them. Right. You know? And basically, I seen them on different occasions. Like one night, um, I asked him a question because I was a big Tupac fan. You know, and I heard a dude say, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a soldier dies but once. And it reminded me of his voice. Okay. So when I asked him about that, he was like, nah, player. He was like, Tupac don't want to be nowhere near me, player. When he get out, he better move to Alaska. 